I think the coolest thing that I've realized in all this is how many women love fishing and are so good at it. Like I've gone around and met so many different girls, like whether it's open water or ice, and they can fish. Like it is so impressive and I learn something new from them all the time. So like this is taking it to the next level, you know? And I just it's so exciting. Introducing the new line of float suits by Ice Armor by Clam. With patent pending motion float technology, it combines the security of a premium float suit with maximum mobility. Using a baffled, segmented design of the flotation material, we've created a line of float suits that are comfortable and flexible so you can stay mobile on the ice. Breathable, waterproof, and flexible. Our float suits have all the great features you expect from Ice Armor by Clam. Stay warm, stay mobile, and stay safe with the float suits from Clam Outdoors. To the ice. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your host, Angie Scott and Barb Perry. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. And we are continuing our series on Women on Ice, getting ready for the big weekend for our big Women Ice Angler Project event. And this week, our guest is Nicole Stone. Nicole, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. It's nice. I think Angie got to interview you last time we had you on the show, and I wasn't available, but now both Angie and I are available, so we're both looking forward to talking to you. And uh you know, it's um, you've already been on the ice quite a bit so far this season. Uh, how is your season going up until this point? It's been great. I was on the ice very early November. I'd say the first week of November. So, and I like stepped on. I mean, our bays and stuff are really shallow, and it's calm water. So, like, it was like two to three inches of ice when we were just kind of fishing off the edge. And it's been great, like, building up to that point. Now, up here, we're all driving on the lake. Made a couple really good trips to some of our big bodies of water where we could pull out some good numbers of walleye. A lot of pan fishing, especially in the beginning. Um, it's hard to get to those deep spots before the ice is totally safe. So I was doing all pan fish, and now, now it's been a great walleye bite. So that's been fun. Yeah, Nicole, you were, cool. I think you were the first video I saw this season of uh, being out on the ice. So <laughs> kudos to you for that. And, uh, you know, glad, you know, I'm sure you took safety precautions in, you know, into play and all that. So absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. Um, always go. We always, I always went out with someone. My mm -hmm. husband was always like, go with someone. So, you know, in case you go in and then we uh, had ice picks with us and used a spud bar every step of the way. And now it's kind of nice because we have so much ice. It's built up at this point. Now we're driving, which is kind of a crazy comparison in such a small amount of time. Well, you know, this year ice has been so weird. I know I live in central, mid-central Wisconsin, and the people that are south of me are just complaining. They have, like, no ice at all. It's just been a terrible year for them. We're okay, although we're not driving on, but I, we're taking ATVs. And then as you get farther north, you know, it's been it's been okay, but... The temperatures have been so mild, so for those who do have ice, the fishing has been fantastic. Oh, <laughs> it's I been so it pleasant. I bet you, that's yeah. It's like, and then you can. The nice thing is, when it's mild like that, you can spend all day, evening. Like I mean, the amount of time you can spend out there and the ability to move is so much better. So like, there's definitely a positive for that because you can just move, 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 and find the fish. Where when like for a stretch of period of time, we were. I don't know, 15 below, 20 below, and it's like you just have to hunker down and just suck it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if the right, fish are there, right. wait it out, which isn't always the best fishing. So I see where that's a really good benefit. Even with the ice not being where you guys want it, that makes better fishing. Yeah, for sure. Now, we are so excited to have you come with us this year. I mean, I think it was a great addition to our Women Ice Angler Project team, and Obviously, you are uh, you know you're quite proficient angler now, but from what I understand, you've never fished on Lake Superior. Is that true? Yes, that is true. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. <laughs> I'm nervous because it's such a big body of water. From what I understand, ice isn't consistent everywhere. Like some spots don't even freeze up, uh, and so for me, it's going to be a crazy. Crazy new experience. Yeah, you're going to be uh, in the boat there with uh, Angie because she's yeah. never been up there either. And she's joining us this year as one of the participants on Saturday. 
So we're excited about that. It's going to be so much fun. I get to meet you, Andy. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm so excited. And, you know, I, I see you fish, you know, Red Lake a lot, which is a pretty big body of water there in, in Minnesota. And I just got to ice fish on Mille Lacs here recently, but Lake Superior, that's a whole different animal. So that's going to be uh, a definitely an interesting experience for me as well. Oh, it's going to be an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just one of those places where you never know what you're going to catch. And that's catching these other species like trout and salmon. You know, they're such fighters. And uh, they come in so fast. I mean, a lot of times you get used to reading your graph with, you know, if hunting for walleyes or crappies or something, you, you know what those fish are on your graph, on your flasher, even before you catch them. Because, you know, you learn to know their patterns and you know what they look like when they're coming in. But all bets are off when you're looking at your flasher over on Lake Superior because you got these fish that will just blast in out of nowhere. And they'll also be followed or be part of a big school. So one of the things that we do is we make sure that as soon as you bring a fish up, you're getting your line right back down there because some of those like cohos and stuff, they'll come through in waves. And you never know where in the water column they're going to come through. That's what's so exciting about it. It's different than inland lake fishing in that regard. Yeah, I That is going to be an amazing thing for me because I've never experienced, like I've honestly, I've, I've never really fished for trout. Like if I catch something, it's not intentional, especially because most of our bodies of water are not trout bodies of water anyways. And I have never even dreamed of catching salmon through the ice. So like to me, I'm going to learn so much from you guys. You have no idea because this is all uncharted territory for me. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and then, and then we're fishing, you know, I think we don't know for sure where we're going to be fishing because of the ice conditions yet. And we may be in the lower bay basin uh, in Ashland, which is kind of like a, you know, 20 to 30 foot feet bay that always freezes up hard. There's always going to be a place to fish. But now, you know, we're hoping we can get to some of these areas that have these steep drops that like go down from 20 to 100 feet. And um, (laughs) that's going to be crazy. We're going to be reeling up fish for a long period of time. Like we're going to be, I'm going to be going for a ride. You're saying like, this is going to be a a process. (laughs) You hook them at what, 40, 50 feet? Yeah. Fight them for a half hour? (laughs) Well, yeah, you know, that's the the fun of it. You know, and the water is so clear, you can actually look down the hole and watch the fish coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see a long ways down. And and some of these coho, they'll come through so high. You know, you're you're looking down the hole, and all of a sudden you see a school of fish right in your hole. (laughs) So it's it's like something that isn't, ordinary for ice fishing so that's i think that's why this place is so special you know it's just kind of unique oh i cannot wait because that is all going to be new to me so i'm so excited you know this we're we're talking about we're we're doing a lot of jigging on this this is kind of what i like to do you know a lot of people in ice fishing we talk about you know people talk about setting tip-ups and sitting in the shack and making it a more social thing this This type of fishing there is way more interactive where you're using, you're jigging, you're being a little bit more aggressive, you're trying to get these fish, these nomadic fish that are just traveling at higher rates of speed. And it's, uh, it's, I might get excited just talking about it. (laughs) So are we using, are are we like using spoons and tipping them with some sort of scent? And then, I mean, are these loud, obnoxious spoons or are these, is that kind of what you guys go with? Well, you know, the, um, I think that some of the classics up there, you know, are like the Swedish pimple and um, okay. jigging wraps are really good. You know, some of the acne um, hyperglides and the clam uh, blade spoon is going to be a good choice up there. A lot of silver and gold, you know, you try to stick with more of the natural colors because the water's so clear, you know, and it's just one of those things where, you know, you got to keep changing and, you know, if, if you get, if you get snubbed, you know, it's time to change. And for me, I like, I like using those more aggressive baits that are maybe going to call fish in from a little farther away. Mm-hmm. The water is so clear, they can see that flash. So I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive. But on the same token, I've caught so many um, lake trout and other kind of baits with just a wax worm and like a little, uh, clam speed spoon or like a halley jig you know where it has that dropper chain with the small jig 
Yeah. Because there you you can catch smell, which is like a tiny, tiny fish, or you can catch a great big fish. So having a bait that you can hook both of them, because if you get a catch smell, then you can put those on a set line, like an automatic fisherman or a tip up or something like that, and then use that as one of your dead stick lines. And to be able to catch those small ones from all the way up to the big ones is is kind of a good skill to have to be diverse in that regard. Right. That makes complete sense. Oh man, that's going to be great. And what, de- and so sorry, I know I'm asking you all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> what depth are we, uh, what depth are we like going to start off at? Like what, when we, when we start women on ice, we go for the first day, what is kind of the initial goal? Well, you know, that's the thing, you know, the ice Ice will determine our depth, you know, and okay. uh, Bodine's fishery up in Bayfield just posted a video where the the bay had iced over part of this Bayfield area, had iced over, then they got a south wind and there was a video of all the ice piling up on the shoreline. <laughs> so it went from a nice starter sheet of ice to no ice in the mad, matter of an afternoon and now all that ice is piled up on the shoreline. So you know, that's kind of where we can get is going to be kind of, we're not going to know almost until the week before. Okay. No, I'd, that makes it even more exciting. Barb, give listeners a little bit of a insight on how this event works. Cause you, the, for the, the media event, you guys start fishing. What, what day does that actually start and, and how does that work? Well, historically, we come in on a Wednesday and get in, and stay at the venue through Sunday. Last year, we kind of did the same thing and had the um, women come in to join us on that Saturday. Well, this year, we're doing uh, another television show, and we're, we added some more media components to it. So we're actually, some of us are going to start that Sunday before. We're going to check wow. into Mission Springs Resort, which is our host. And they have a beautiful facility. If you want to check out their website, Mission Springs Resort, I think it's in Washburn, Wisconsin, or Bayfield, somewhere over there. We'll have a link to it on the show notes on this page. But So we're going to be based out of there. One of the things that we're really excited about, and I think some of our fans and some of the people that are coming to fishing with are excited about, is this year we're... You know, the Women on Ice team, along with Tommy Hicks, are the ones that are guiding our participants that are coming in. I mean, last year we kind of um, had some local guides take care of all of it. The the women went with them, and we just kind of showed up in the afternoon to visit with them and check in and maybe give some tips and stuff. But this year we're the ones that are going to be guiding. And I know, Nicole, there's so many women that are excited to be able to fish with you that day. They're just pumped for it. I'm so excited to fish with them and just to fish with, like, I think the coolest thing that I've realized in all this is how many women love fishing and are so good at it. Like, I've gone around and met so many different girls, like, whether it's open water or ice, and they can fish. Like, it is so impressive, and I learn something new from them all the time. So, like, this is taking it to the next level, you know, and I just, it's so exciting. Well, I have to say, Nicole, every now and then I come across a post on social media where someone's asking something to the effect of, who's your favorite female angler to follow on social media? And it never fails, hands down, every time when I'm scrolling through the comments, your name pops up the most. So that's that's super awesome. What what does that mean to you to have that many people like inspired by what you're doing? I it I it very it it means the world to me right like there's been so many women that have impacted me and influenced me to be a better angler to try you know get out of my comfort zone women on ice now just one more step for me to get out of my comfort zone and become a better angler and to think that out there there's some girls that maybe do the same back to me like they see that I'm out there fishing doing solo adventures going you know wherever it takes make me a better angler and that makes them want to do it that's like the biggest reward you know is just seeing all these women that truly love it and when they see another girl out there killing it they just want to they just want to take it to the next level too and so that's what it means to me it's like this whole circle is like paying off for everyone you know what i mean like everyone is helping other other women anglers not only become better at the sport but just getting more women into the sport and i guess it's just it's, it's nice to see it come full circle yeah you know and i've been 
I've been around for a long time now and to see this momentum kind of go that way and more like if she can do it, I can do it. And we're better together. And these philosophies that we've been encouraging people, women are just taking it very seriously and being very, you know, having not only working on their own angling skills, but making it a point to reach out and being mentors to others. And, and that's, what's really helping grow this sport for women, I think. And that's why we're seeing the, the huge surge that we are right now. I mean, it, it's just unbelievable, the surge of women ice anglers there is right now. I've never seen it and like this good. before. The, yeah, they're very good. And I don't know how many guides I've talked to that they say they would much prefer to guide women than men because women listen, they, they look, they receive information and suggestions very well and they utilize them and all of a sudden they're improved within the one day. And, uh, that's the thing, you know, they, they want to be good. They want to get better and they listen to suggestions. They're, they're asking questions. They don't have this attitude that they know everything. And I think that's the biggest stumbling block with people getting better is just thinking that they know so much. That's just kind of a barrier. And, and the more I learn, the more I realize, the more I need to learn because there's so much to know and there's so much to ways to improve and having other people that are helping you and fishing with other people that are better than you really kind of makes everybody's game better. So true. Like that's, you nailed it. And how do you feel, Barb, since you kind of helped start this whole process? Like you were doing it before social media was really cool. Like, I mean, you kind of like kick this into gear. How does that make you feel? Well, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I feel satisfied. You know, it's like I have a certain amount of satisfaction because I remember when I was the only one, <laughs> you know, I was the only one out there and like, what's wrong with you people? Why aren't you out here? It's so cool. And to see how this comes now, you know, and social media has been a huge part of that. And, you know, I'm still one of the dinosaurs that aren't that good at that. I mean, I could put on a comedy show if I showed some of the YouTube videos I try to take. They're absolutely hysterical. The camera's upside down. I'm, I'm just a disaster when I try to YouTube something. So it's funny. So people like you, Nicole, that are coming along that are really good at that piece is really taking this movement and pushing it out so much further. Well, thanks. I try. You know what? My YouTube videos, especially my beginning ones, they're, they're all <laughs> they're a disaster, but it's all about just trying, right? Like I figure, like like with fishing or anything, it's just starting and then getting better over time. I mean, you can't you can't edit a blank slate, you know. You gotta just you gotta start and then just keep working on it. So I definitely look at social media and fishing in the same way, or YouTube videos. Like the better con, hopefully my content keeps improving with my fishing skills, and then it it'll all come come around. <laughs> so, well, it's it's not easy. Goal. It's like having two jobs. You know, doing the the media piece of these projects is way harder than the fishing for me. I mean, that's the to talk about time consuming. I try to edit edit a video. I was one time I wasn't able to go fishing for two weeks because it was down. <laughs> spending so much time on this video. I'm like, forget this. I'm going fishing. But you know, <laughs> yeah, it takes forever. I'm, I agree. Yeah, right. But. You know, it's nice to see so many, you know, and this, the stuff that you're doing here with Anna on Ice, I mean, you you two seem to be doing a, quite a bit of filming. Tell me some of the filming projects that you guys are involved in now. So, so I just have to say it publicly that Anna is an amazing angler. Like fishing with her has made me a lot better. And she definitely, the way she uses finesse strategies to catch panfish, just it's, she's got such a touch to it. It's crazy like again examples of women making women better she's definitely made me better um and then together uh we're part of outdoor bound tv she was already on board which is a tv show in the midwest and then kurt who owns outdoor bound tv then let me join this last year so we get to do some tv episodes together that way and then gander reached out and wanted to do like a they're doing like an outdoor my great outdoor life just kind of showing all the excitement around the outdoors. And so me and her did a, an all girl segment, woman segment on the ice series. So we did snowmobiling and um, ice fishing. And then the other thing we've just been working on is like our own social media. And then she's on my YouTube video and we're going to have her on my YouTube videos more just because we have a good dynamic. And 
I got a lot of good feedback on that because it kind of showcased how fun fishing can be. I think a lot of times we all get caught up in, in like the details of everything. We forget that for a lot of women, it's just getting out laughing together. Like, Hey, instead of going to the bar or to the movies or shopping, let's go fishing and I'll grab a couple drinks, go fishing. And I think that's kind of, kind of what we're pushing towards, like this whole element of this is really fun, you know, not about who's better or worse or anything, but about laughing and being in the great outdoors. So that's kind of been what we're working on together with the kind of resources that have been given to us very fortunately. Yeah. You know, and, and she's awesome. You know, I, I found out, you know, that she's actually been a member of Wisconsin women fish since last year. And I'm like, how did I, I sent her a note <laughs> after uh, we, I saw her at one of the ice shows or something. I said, how did you get under my radar? How did I not even know who you were, what you were doing, and you were a member of our organization. So I was, like, shocked, you know, because she, she's so humble. You would never know it by oh, talking yeah. to her, you know. She never, you know, okay. even promotes herself. I mean, I looked at her, you know, besides the video thing is one thing, but even on her own Facebook, I mean, you would never know how great she is and how exposed she is. And so I hope that I get to fish with her someday. That's one of my goals. Oh yeah, she's an she's an incredible angler. Definitely, it, she impresses me all the time. So <laughs> it's really and I love great one I love the influence that you have not just on women but on young girls. And I'm looking at this picture right now um, from that uh, little. Uh, short uh, film shoot that you just did um, with the two young girls that are wearing the t-shirts that say, I am the future of ice fishing, which is so cool. With your permission, I'd love to share that photo on our um, show notes for this page so people can see that. But um, I just, you know, that's so important, the influence that you have on the younger girls looking up to you and they're, they are the future of fishing and ice fishing. So that's super cool. Oh, thank you. I would absolutely love it if you shared that. And like, I do have to say that so these two little girls um, are the Bogdans who own, uh, many people are probably familiar with Wakuska Falls Lodge, their daughters. And these two little girls are incredible. Like I watched the one reel in a 36 inch Northern. I'm like, this is what is happening right now. <laughs> I mean, this girl's five years old and she's reeling in a 36 inch Northern. It's crazy. Wow. But out of an ice wall, it was just mind blowing. So I think that alone speaks speaks volumes about where fishing's going. I, I know we shared a tip. Some some young girl had a tip that she did. She did a little video on how to set a tip up, and we shared that on our page. And it's just like the cutest thing. It's and they know what they're doing. God, can you imagine if we would have had that start when we were that age? Yeah, that's what I think. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, if I would have been that cool at that age, I can't even imagine where it'd be now. Like, <laughs> that's just amazing. <laughs> well, I'm excited to fish with you. I know we're going to be posting a lot of information that's coming up on our pages. And I know that a lot of the, the gals are excited to fish with you. And there's still a couple spots left. We're almost full. You know, we we want to keep it a small enough number so we can really give the personalized attention but uh, I know the gals that are registered so far are just so excited. And it's coming up. I mean, it's not going to be, well, I don't know when this airs. It's going to be, we're almost going to be right on it. So yeah, we're stoked. It's going to be just, oh, gosh, I'm just, I'm, I think about it all the time. Like, my January is going to be amazing. <laughs> so. Well, let's just hope Mother Nature cooperates and it stays cold up there. And uh, we can go wherever we want. You know, we want to be able to go where we want. So. We'll, uh, and, and we're going to be doing some tips too. That's the other thing. We're going to start posting more tips on the women on ice page. And Angie just did a great job on a video that she did that, you know, her video editing skills are actually really good. So Angie, I'm hoping that, you know, she's, Angie's going to produce some videos when she gets up there. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have a lot of content to share between everybody that's there and all the, all the adventures that we're going to have, uh, it's going to be fun. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait. Can, can I do a little behind-the-scenes YouTube videos? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and that's the that's the part, piece that people like. You know, that that's – I mean, I work with this gal who has a YouTube channel called Badger Farm Girl. 
And uh, she posts a lot of stuff just within our members only um, fishing club site, you know, just for the three, 400 women that are in there that enjoy it. But the ones they enjoy the most are like the bloopers and the behind the scenes stuff. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Like being able to connect with people and see real life, I think, is kind of where the, the movement is going. Like people like to be able to relate, you know, and, and the reality is fishing never goes perfect. Like, like you said, bloopers are a hit because everybody has those moments fishing or, you know, packing up for fishing or whatever it is. So I think that's definitely. Yeah. The other day I was fishing this lake in the woods that no one ever fishes. So I was just going in on foot and I was trying to do the YouTube video thing. You know, I had my little GoPro. So I'm filming, I'm pulling my sled full of stuff. Sure enough, the sled tips over. All the minnows are spilling out all over the place. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, so all this is like, so now I have this in my computer, this total, you know, screw up morning I had, you know, but then you go out there and you're jigging up, you know, 30 inch pike on the jig rod. And I mean, that's fun. No, it is so fun. It makes all the little ups and downs worth it. And no matter how no matter how good you are, you're always something always happens to somebody when they're fishing. That's hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I when we were at Gander, okay, when we were doing the shoot in northern Manitoba for Gander, I like, you know, had this wicked awesome hook set. I'm talking to the camera saying I'm reeling up this big fish. And then when Anna goes to help me get it out of the hole, she's like first she's like, You caught like a cable. I'm like, What? <laughs> And then I actually <laughs> caught a fishing rod, right? Like, <laughs> like, like the whole time I'm acting like it's this big fish. I caught a fishing rod. I tuned out some oh, fishing rod, by the way. So I, I made money. Wow. Game, but... Nice. <laughs> sure. nice. <laughs> sure. Just an example of where nothing goes the way you think. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess uh, next time we'll talk, we'll be on the ice. Excited about that. And uh, thank you for being on the show today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I love what you guys are doing. Um, it's just great to hear from two very good women anglers. Like this podcast is great and all the people you feature. Um, I'm really looking forward to listening to the Hannah Hudson episode too. She's always good. Yes. yes. Always a story there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. Awesome. It was great talking to you guys. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Angie. Nice job on all the behind the scenes work. I got to give you a, a pat on the back for that, people. Mm-hmm. There's a lot that goes into it that you do. And I just want to thank you again for all that piece of the pie. Oh, I, I appreciate that. And it's my pleasure. And, uh, you know, like, like Nicole said, the, the more we keep doing this, the better it's going to get. And uh, I can't wait to see where everything goes. And I can't wait for this event. And it'll be awesome. fun. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Stay tuned next week. As Nicole mentioned, we're featuring our epic interview with Hannah Stonehouse Hudson. You will not want to miss. And this is the one right before the big event. This has all been leading up to Women on Ice on the Great Gitchagumi, as I like to call it. One of my favorite songs, despite its artistic license. And much to the dismay of most of my friends is The Wreck of the Evan Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. But I make them sit through all 6 minutes and 32 seconds of it every chance I get anyways. I digress. We are super stoked. The time is almost upon us. I cannot wait. See you then.